Welcome to Sprattronics Learning Lab. I'm Preston Spratt, and today we're going to be doing a shark dissection. Now, these sharks that we're going to be dissecting today are dogfish sharks. They're very common at the beach. They're typically fairly small, but we're going to learn so much from these sharks. Now, some people get a little squeamish around dissections or don't think it's a good use of an animal. But here's the thing. We learn so much by doing these scientific investigations. And sharks, they're pretty cool. Sharks are apex predators. That means they're the top of the food chain. Now, they can't just get there by being fish that swim around in the sea. They've got some pretty exciting animal adaptations that we're gonna be exploring as we do this shark dissection. Before we jump in, let's talk about the tools we're gonna to use today for this shark dissection and for any other dissection that you might do. We have our forceps, we have our surgical scalpels, it's like scissors for cutting through tough skin. We have a probe to move some things out of the way so that we don't have to touch the shark with our fingers. And then we have our surgical scalpel. Now this is an extremely sharp blade that's gonna make it easy to get through that thick, shark skin that protects them. Let's dive right in and we'll start looking at the outside of the shark and see how it's similar to creatures that we know about and how it's different. Let's do this. Here's our dogfish shark. And this is a juvenile shark. And before we even start cutting into a shark, it's important for us to learn about the special features that are on the outside of this shark. Now, as you take a look at this, what do you notice with this shark? I'm gonna turn it just a little bit so we can see what's called the nares. And these are little nostrils on the front of the shark. Sharks don't have lungs like humans do. Instead, they have these gills on the outside and those gills pull oxygen out of the seawater. You've probably heard that sharks have to constantly be in motion, and that's true to keep water moving over those gills so that they can breathe. Next, we have something called spiracles, and these are right behind the eyes. These openings also allow water to pass through the gills even when the shark's mouth is closed. Now, I've mentioned the gills a few times and the mouth. Let's take a look at the mouth of this shark. And I see that it's on the very bottom of the body. Now, if a mouth is on the bottom, so this shark is swimming along the bottom and its mouth only opens down, what do you think this shark eats? Do you think it swims up and catches fish near the surface? Probably not. This shark is probably grabbing little creatures off the bottom sucking them up in that mouth that's on the bottom of its body. One thing you might notice from looking above is this shark is sand colored on the top and that's so that bigger sharks above it aren't going to try to eat it. Now if a shark comes along and thinks it's going to eat this there are these little pins inside these fins that would give the shark trying to attack it a poke and that's a pretty outstanding adaptation that allows this baby shark to survive well into adulthood. The fin on top is called the dorsal fin, and it has two of them, one here and one on the back. And then at the very back, we've got something called a caudal fin. That's sort of on the tail at the very back. Let's flip this shark over and take a look at the underside. So we've got some pectoral fins here on the sides. We've got the mouth those nares, which are like the nose. We also have some fins back here. Those are called clasper fins. And an important thing to know when you're studying zoo animals or creatures are some words that mean different directions on the body. So if something is cranial, it's closer to the head. If something caudal, like this caudal fin, it's towards the tail. We also have medial, which means middle, and lateral, which means to the sides. Let's talk a little bit about these nares. These nares let water go through and it goes through a sensory membrane 
that lets the shark detect chemicals like blood in the water. You've probably heard they can detect one drop of blood in the ocean, and that's because of those nares that absorb water and then detect small, small amounts of chemicals. It's time now for us to make some cuts so that we can explore the internal anatomy of this shark. And we're gonna make three cuts. We're gonna make one cut laterally right along the mouth, and then we're gonna cut caudally, that means towards the tail, along the side, and then one more cut right down here so that we can open up the shark and see the systems that are inside. Now, a shark has a backbone, which means it's a vertebrate, but sharks are interesting in that their bones are made up of cartilage, so we won't be seeing any bones inside this shark. Instead, we're gonna be seeing some bone-like structures that are cartilage. So we've made that first cut, and now we're gonna cut right along down the side, and sharks have very thick skin, so it will take a couple passes to go all the way through it. And I'm noticing little dots along the shark, and that's called the lateral line of the shark. Do you know what purpose that serves? It's another sensory organ that allows the shark to sense chemicals in the water. Now I cut right along the back side, back across, and this should let us fold things out. We're seeing lots of muscles as we open this shark up, and sharks are like one big muscle as they swim. They're in constant motion. Now, I'm gonna put a diagram up on the screen so we can see this a little better, but we have a nice view of lots of organs inside this shark. And this first organ right here, it's got this black color to it. This is the shark's liver. And shark's liver are full of oil. You might be able to see some of that yellow oil seeping out. That's what allows a shark to float or to not sink, is the fact that their liver is full of oil. And we cut away that liver. This smells like a can of sardines to me. Set the liver off to the side. And we get to the next part, which is going to be some of the intestines, the esophagus. I'll see if we can find a heart in here. So behind our liver, we've got the esophagus. This is the connection between the mouth and down to the stomach. And then this big piece here, this is the stomach. That's why whenever they catch sharks in the wild and they can cut the stomach open and see what all it has eaten, they often find fish in there. Cut into that stomach and see if there's anything in there. There's some partially dissect, digested fish that are inside that stomach. Get my hand out of the way. From the, below the stomach, next we have the duodenum. This is where a lot of the food and the nutrients are absorbed. And then we keep going down, and this is how the shark will poop, is out of that tube. We also have a gallbladder in here a pancreas, and that looks like a spleen right there. But these are the parts of our shark. Now, 
join me and we'll talk about, we'll look at a diagram of this where you can get a better shot of the inside. Thank you for taking the time to digest this shark with me. One thing that's different in a shark that humans have, but a shark doesn't quite have, are those long, long, long intestines. And instead, that shark just kind of goes straight into the duodenum and begins that digestion right there, pulling out the nutrients that it needs to survive. Thank you so much for doing this dissection with me. We'll talk a little bit more about it once I've had a chance to wash my hands and get cleaned up. Thank you. Let's take a look at this diagram I drew of a dogfish shark. We're gonna start by labeling the external features on the ventral side. That means we're looking outside of the shark's body on the belly side. Right here we have the nares. Those are like nostril holes that actually allow water into that sensory organ so that the shark can detect chemicals in the water. Right here we have the mouth. Below that we have the gills. Here on the side our shark has two pectoral fins and if we get down here to the back that's where the tail is gonna be. There just wasn't enough room for me to draw that tail on here. Now let's go back up here to where the gills are. On this side, you can see the gills on the outside, but if we open up the shark, we see where the gills are on the inside. And these gills pull oxygen out of the water and put it into the shark's bloodstream. This is the heart, and here is the aorta which goes right next to those gills to oxygenate the blood. Now let's look through and start labeling the organs that we saw inside the shark. This huge organ in orange is gonna be the liver, and it's full of oil, which allows the shark to not sink to the bottom if it happens to stop swimming. Right here in the middle of that is a little gallbladder behind the liver. We saw that when we opened up the shark. This organ behind the liver, and all of these are gonna fall behind the liver, this organ is gonna be the stomach. Below that, we have a pancreas and a spleen, but connected to that stomach and this long tube is the intestine, also called the spiral valve. I think I called it a duodenum earlier, which is the first part of the intestine. At the bottom of that intestine, we have the colon, which is where that shark is going to poop. Food that goes into its mouth is gonna come out down there. And then this blue organ, we have a kidney. These are the major organs inside of our shark. If you go back and watch the video or see it more, you'll probably notice many of those organs.